If I start telling people about hell, I might just scare them off. Where are you gonna scare them off to? Hell number two? Or are you just gonna sit there and let them burn? And the, again, this is what I was saying. I, I wasn't planning. See, again, there's a thread through this whole documentary. It's like, wait a second. And we take a break and we go, that's like this movie. Remember this? And we share mm-hmm. that over through, over and over. I wasn't planning on doing that in the documentary, but it just kept coming out as I'm going through the research in my own mind. I'm going, wait yeah. a minute. That's like that. And, so, and it happened so many times that I had to share it because I'm going, wait yeah. a second. This is not by chance. We are being prepared for something. Oh, and by the way, if you recall in that movie, uh, the Gene Simmons character, uh, the one way that he was for sure to get people is he even had created this gun that had these uh, these uh, bullets that literally could chase people down. So he'd fire, and who cares if you were around a corner? If you remember the, the movie, uh, once he fired that gun uh, you, and you were the target, it literally chased you down like a guided missile, except it was a bullet. Well, By your DNA. Yeah. Now, here's what's <laughs> weird. On a complete hunch, I remember, I remember coming up to this, going like, hey, this sounds like the runaway movie, right? And, you know, because with the MAVs and stuff like that, and how somebody could hijack them and use them for nefarious purposes, just like the movie premise, right? And then I remember, and they show, of course, in that trailer, you know, Gene Simmons with the missile-guided bullet thing. And I'm going, wait a second. Did they really have I wonder if they have that technology out. I kid you not. I found two examples. One is a research firm in San Diego, and they actually have guns out right now that are missile-guided controlled bullets. Yeah. And they actually share how you could be the worst shot in the universe, but when it locks it, the bullet onto the target, you could literally shoot 500 yards to the left and, and blow it, and they'll show that bullet will never miss the target. Yep. So even that aspect of that trailer movie, Runaway, uh, 30 years ago, is even that is a reality. And, and again, one of the things that we did with this documentary, too, is we interviewed uh, four different military analyst guys, right? And, and, and based on the one interview I had with the, the one guy, I actually changed my rule. Uh, for years, uh, I would say... Um, that uh, you know, hey, if if we know of anything in the in the public arena with technology, you know, or military technology, whatever, doesn't matter. But if, if they release it to the public, make it public knowledge, we are actually my role is this: we are actually twenty years behind the actual technology, right? Yeah. Well, based on what I uh, we had interviewed with these military guys, and they just shared with us declassified information, right? We didn't get to share some of the stuff we talked about behind the camera. Uh, but this is just the declassified information. But based on those conversations, I literally have changed my rule that I've been sticking to for probably the last 20 years. And I no longer believe that what they have released in the public were actually 20 years behind the technology. But based on these recent conversations I had, I've changed it to 30. We're actually 30 mm. years behind the technology. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, one of the guys was talking about he was in the military. Uh, this guy is still in the military. Uh, and this guy actually is also working at one of the drone bases. Uh, for the military. Uh, but anyway, so he shares how uh, in the 70s, in the 70s, uh, at JPL Laboratories, the Jet Proportion Laboratories, uh, they took him on a tour. And this was just stuff for to show people on the tour, if you, if you can get a tour in the military. And how they were showing him how far advanced in the 70s the Big Brother satellite technology was. And he says it's really hard to describe. And again, you'll see this on the documentary. You know, uh, they had this device, this kind of table we looked at, and the guy basically says, you know, he would just kind of move this thing, and, and all of a sudden the picture would go kind of, you know, wobbly for a little bit, and then it would zoom in, and then you'd see, you know, uh, a picture of the, the, the you know planet Earth, and then he'd do it and zoom it in some more, and then you'd see a section uh, in the ocean, and then he'd do it again, and then all of a sudden you see out in the middle of nowhere in the ocean a sailboat. And then he'd do it again, and then he'd zoom it in, and you could see some people on the sailboat. And then he'd say, you know, he'd zoom it in on the on the one guy who's on the sailboat, and he could actually see the the uh, the, the details on the guy's shirt on the sailboat. Mm. Right? This was in the seventies. Seventies. <laughs> they had yeah. that out, that available, functioning to do a tour on for military in the seventies. What do you got now? 
Yeah, you know, it, it just exactly. blew me away. So if we're seeing with even this drone technology, even with the artificial technology, even them talking about, hey, pretty soon, I know it sounds crazy, but we're going to have these mosquitoes flying around extracting your DNA. What if they already have it? I mean, exactly. what if, you, you know, Rory, you're over there in Florida. you got more mosquitoes than us. Sorry, buddy. Uh, you, you just swatted that <laughs> mosquito or you got, stu- you know, got it stung by a mosquito or bit by a mosquito, and, uh, but you didn't swat it in time. You just thought it was a real mosquito. What if it wasn't a real mosquito? What if that had yeah, exactly. over here? What if they just extracted your DNA? What if they did something yeah. else? I mean, mm-hmm. this is not crazy talk. This is reality. And again, this is what we are headed for. Okay, And again, you, 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 I think that what they're also conditioning us uh, to is not just accepting this technology, but accepting that, you know what, we need somebody to control this. You know what, we need the government to control all this technology to make sure that it's used properly for our safety. Now, if you guys notice by the tone of my voice, I'm using sarcasm to make a point. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what it's all about. Isn't that what they always do? Oh, you know, oh, no, you know, create a crisis, you manage the outcome, right? Uh, 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 the government, the government's here to save us. Oh, come on. And believe it or not, I really think that uh, we're already being conditioned to let that, quote, government control all this technology for our welfare, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Because, again, what, what do you see in the news right now? Oh, did you hear about the drone? It almost caused that plane to wreck. It almost got sucked up in their engines. And Oh, no, did you hear that drone? It fell out of the sky and hit the guy in the head. Oh, no, did you hear about that drone? Somebody was being a peeping Tom with their neighbor. Oh, no, did you hear about that drone that what? Landed in the White House lawn. That's mm, it. Yeah. I'll tell you what, it's over with now. We can't <laughs> have that, right? So believe it or not, that's exactly what's happening. I believe that they're now come out with drone scares Ooh. Mm-hmm. to get yeah. us to cry out for what they want us to cry out for, and that is, government, please save us, help, help. And that's what they're doing. And believe it or not, we expose this too. Verizon, okay, which is the U.S. Uh, largest uh, wireless um, telecom company, is already working with NASA. Now, this was a weird combo to me. What? Verizon working with NASA? But this is what's going on. And Verizon has teamed up with NASA and signed an agreement last year with NASA, okay, at the NASA's uh, Ames uh, Research Center, okay. And the reason why is they are developing a system to monitor all civilian and commercial drones. So basically the whole drone mm-hmm. technology, okay. So, and the, the whole thing is to quote, like, to, to quote, protect us, okay. And, and let me read to you this little quote there. They say, at the moment, there is little to stop operators flying wherever they want with these drones. And these agencies would like a technology that will automatically geofence drones to keep them away from sensitive areas like the White House. See, that was your last straw. Then this will allow them to, quote, dr- ground drones in bad weather, help them to avoid buildings and each other while flying, and decide, okay, they get the control decide which drones have priority in congested uh, airspaces. Uh, They're also uh, considering monitoring drones uh, using different ways, not just radar, not just cell phone signals, that's where Verizon comes in, but also, hey, listen to this, orbiting satellites. So here you have Verizon working with NASA to develop a system that will control all the drones, technically, wink, wink, in the United States, but one of the things that you're using to control the drones, okay, uh, quote, for our safety, uh, is with satellites. Satellites, once you use satellites, that means you can control not just what goes on in the United States, but around the world. This is actually what's being developed right now, okay? And again, this is what most people don't realize. All of this is happening to our planet all at the same time. And it, it, yeah. just, it just blows me away how little people mm-hmm. have any clue uh, of mm-hmm. what's coming. Okay, now, believe it or not, again, we're talking about drones. I, I haven't even really got to talk about, other than the fly scenario pretty much, or the missile guided bullet, that a lot of these drones are being armed, and they're being armed to the teeth. Okay, if you could take basically every little 
uh, let's let's go to the militarization aspect of this, the drone technology, right? Because you know we we do we've heard about the predator, right? And the predator is you know armed with Hellfire missiles, amongst other things, right? And so it's being used right now. In fact, uh, at the time of this, uh, the research we did the documentary, about six thousand people uh, have been killed uh, with the Predator drone program. And of course, that's just what's being reported, right? I don't know. You know it could be astronomically more than that. I don't know. But that's you know. So we're already getting used to these things being quote given permission to kill people from the sky, right? Which again is like a Terminator premise. But again, uh, there's right now currently a human element uh, element involved, right? Because that's what they keep saying. Well, don't worry about this. There's always going to be human involved, you know, to make sure that this doesn't get out of control. Well, at the same time, they're now removing the human element, which I believe is paving the way for AI to take total total control. And and we share this. They're they're already. It's not coming. It's already here. Uh, they already have robotic jet fighters. Okay, you, you know, again, UAVs are unmanned aerial vehicles. They have a new term out, if you want to check it out, it's called UCAV, unmanned combat area vehicles. And they literally have an unmanned jet fighter. You know, it's, it's a very similar one, uh, at least this one. There's several, and, and it's not just the United States. There's different countries around the world doing the exact same thing. China's got one. They call it Dark Swords, a supersonic unmanned area vehicle, if you want to look into that one. Um, but it's basically, it's a jet fighter. It kind of looks uh, similar to... Uh, you know, the ones that we see today, but there is no human. It's completely unmanned, you know, and they're combining this stuff with artificial intelligence. But imagine all the jet fighters being controlled by artificial intelligence. There's no human. Yeah. Imagine all the helicopters, because we exposed this too. The helicopters are being droned out, right? You don't need a human to fly a helicopter. Uh, imagine the ships, whole ships from the Navy. There is no pilot. There is no captain, Right. There's no, it's it's all being automated out. A whole ship. In fact, the ships that they're looking at, uh, they're looking at using the ships to even launch more drones. Okay, in the water and in the air and under the water and things of that nature. In fact, one of the ones that they have, they have basically they put them on the bottom of the ocean, and that when a target goes over from the bottom of the ocean, it shoots out a, a whole bunch of different pods, a whole swarm of drones, and they come up and they take the target out. Right? You don't even know it's coming, okay? but it's coming from underneath, it's an underwater swarm. Okay? Uh, submarines, they're developing submarines that do not need oh. a human uh, to man them. Tanks, this is another wild one, robotic tanks that they're using, uh, robotic supply vehicles, jeeps. Uh, they're even making pack mules so the soldiers don't have to carry uh, their gear, that you have these uh, robotic uh, pack mules that can do the work for them. Again, no human element uh, involved in that as well. If you like our videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all our frequent updates.